Roast Battle League Commissioner Pat Barker here. Welcome to the first week of the 2024 season. We're about to jump into that with some brand new battles for you guys. But before we get to that, have to run a couple of upcoming tour dates by you. If you're watching this on Tuesday, the day it drops, tomorrow night, March 13th, Wednesday, we will be at the Tempe Improv. March 28th, we will be back at Jam in the Van for the next round of the California Cup. I had said previously, March 21st, that date has been moved. So if you were planning to attend that, make sure you update your calendars accordingly. We will be back at Tempe at the Improv on April 10th. That is going to become a monthly spot for us. Um, and uh, we are also down in San Diego. That is also a monthly spot. So if you're in San Diego by La Jolla, if you're in the greater Phoenix area, make sure you keep an eye out for those, sh those shows every uh, month as they happen. And then the uh, Jam in the Van April date, April 25th, that will be the semifinals of the California Cup. We have a couple of big things coming up in May that I'm not allowed to talk about just yet. Stay tuned for that. In the very, very, very near future, you're going to be hearing about some cool, exciting, upcoming roast battle projects in May. Without further ado, let's jump into the first week of the 2024 RBL season. It's finally here. The 2024 RBL season is upon us. I am the Roast Battle League Commissioner, Pat Barker, joined as always by the creator and the host of the Roast Battle, Brian Moses. It's been a long off season, but it's finally time to get this shit underway. I'm excited. Week one, baby. Let's go. It's, um, it's, I can, I can feel it just in, um, the reactions of the different cities. Everybody is, uh, really excited to go out and get this thing. We, we, uh, not even every city has launched yet, but every city was like really quick to like send a battle. They were like sending them hours after they happened. Like here, take it. Um, and, and uh, you know, people are fired up. Obviously, we've had a lot of trash talk and people feeling disrespected. This is the first week that the people who are complaining that they are being disrespected first week for them to put up or shut up. So this is a big week, man. It's week one. We've been talking about it all off season. We've had four months off. Everybody's been ramping up, excited about season two. Now we're in week one. I'm going to try not to curse mm. this whole episode so we get monetized, mm. so we can make some money for you guys <laughs> out there in Rose Battle League country. Uh, I'm excited about this, man. Week one, let's get underway. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll jump into it. I, uh, we're going to change the format a little bit this year. Last year, it was the top five battles of the week. We watched them with 16 cities in the league. Top five felt uh, tough. It felt like we needed to have more opportunities for cities to get on the board. So we're expanding this year to a top seven. Now, that Whoa. being said, I do not want this to turn into a two-hour podcast. Nobody wants to hear us talk about seven different battles every week. They don't even want to hear us talk. They don't even want to hear us talk. Yeah. At all. Um, exactly. So for the people who are sick of hearing us talk, I have great news for you. Uh, very exciting. We're going to go to top seven. Battles seven through five, we are just going to throw to them. We are going to present them. We're, we're not even watching them here. I've watched all of them, but we are just going to add them in. People can watch them uninterrupted without having to deal with our bullshit. Um, but then I do want to break down the top four battles of the week. Um, as far as the points go, it'll be the same kind of structure. If you have the number one battle, you get seven points. Number two, you get six and so on down the line. So at the end of this episode, somebody will be walking away with seven points and, and standing out atop the league. Okay, so that's how the point system works now. It's yes. number one battle of the week. It's seven points. Yep. Per city or per battler? It's so it's per it's per city. The standings are done by city, um, but also this is going to go you know to the battler. We keep track of uh, how many RBL weekly points you've gained for your city when we look at things like the MVP race um, and uh, you know the, the the fantasy league that we haven't quite gotten off the ground. I, one of these days. RBL da Daily Fantasy will be a thing. Um, <laughs> Season I, five. I have a whole system worked out. It's just uh, I haven't been able to uh, to implement it yet. But, um, yeah, one city is going to be walking away with seven points. Okay. Uh, we are making one other minor rule change. Last year, we had a system where, let's say, a Chicago battler came to L.A. and battled in L.A. and it gained four points. All, For L.A. All of those points went to L.A. Exactly. Didn't seem fair. No. But... Also, I was like, well, I don't want to split it because then if you're L.A., do you want to submit a battle where you're only going to get half the points? Oh. So it was, a, it was a tough thing. I talked to a few people, and the solution we came up with was in that scenario this year, L.A. would still get the full four points or however many it was worth, but we would also take half of those points and give them as bonus points to Chicago. 
Oh, wow. That way you're getting points for your battlers going over and battling in other places. Because I have a feeling we're going to see more intercity battles uh, this season than we've ever seen. Big community. I know. Uh, Big community outreach. Absolutely. Roast Battle Scotland is launching in a week. Um, Ryan Cullen is battling the founder of Roast Battle Montreal, or uh, not Montreal, Manchester. Really? So we got Scotland versus Manchester coming up right away. Josh Means has been all over me to do a Bay versus LA event up in Sacramento. Um, he uh, he challenged us to put together a dream team, and some of the names being kicked around are are crazy. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Like who? Uh, I, I don't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> we got we got to lock them in. We got to lock them in before I I, I speculate right, on anything. Right, but right. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of city versus city you know battles coming up. So we wanted to tweak that system so it's rewarding both cities and the people who are traveling. Because I mean, it sucks to like travel and only rack up points for like another team. So now these ba- these battles are now worth six points. Now these are bonus points. Like it was like injury time in soccer. Yeah, something like that. All right. So these are like imaginary points. So if you have the number two battle of the week mm-hmm. in uh, Austin, and it's Austin versus New York, Austin will get the six points that they would normally get. But we're also going to throw three to New York. Okay. So everybody wins. That's like rock and jock. It just doesn't make sense. It de- I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I. I- <laughs> No, for those of you following at home, I hope you got all that math right. I tried to help you out by asking a number of questions yes. to see exactly what's going to happen. Now you can revert back to this video to see what the point system is and then get mad. And what's the last, like, how many weeks do we have? Uh, in the full season? Yeah. 34 or something like that. Oh, yeah. So in week 34, you can revert back to week one. Exactly. When somebody loses by two points, they will go all the way back to this video and be like, no, that's bullshit. Yeah. Um, if you're going to complain about it. Because I didn't travel to New York, I don't get an extra three points. If you're going to complain about it, do it now. Put <laughs> put your complaints in the comments today. I will not respect the week 34, you know, revisionist history. Yeah. It's the rules. It's the rules for everybody. Uh, we're establishing it right away. So no complaints after this. Get it out of your system now. I love season two. I haven't cursed yet. It's going to be a long season. Um, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's jump right into it. And again, for these uh, these first three battles, we are not going to offer our commentary. We're just going to throw to the battles. You guys enjoy them. We'll be back in a little bit to cover battles four through one. But we're going to start right now with an expansion city, the RBL Weekly debut of Cleveland, uh, coming in at the number seven spot this week for a fun battle between Kevin Eliason and Dave Heron. Here it is. Put your hands together for your first battler, Dave Heron. <laughs> And let's hear it for his opponent, Kevin Eliasson. And Kevin's going to go first. Roast him. Uh, Dave asked me if I can give him a ride to the show tonight, and uh, I unfortunately had to tell him that I am not forklift certified. Ziggy Stardust here named his dog Bowie for sentimental purposes. Um, Bowie obviously being the name of the knife held to his mother's neck during his conception. (laughs) Thank you, Dad. Uh, (laughs) I'm proud of you. Uh, I don't really know Dave that well, but uh, he told me that he used to be a backup vocalist in a metal band called Facemaker. Now he's just a candidate for lap band and a brand new pacemaker. (laughs) When this overgrown leprechaun almost drank himself to death on his 21st birthday, it wasn't his fault. He hadn't hadn't been that shit-faced since those nine months in the womb. (laughs) Thank you, Mom. (laughs) Uh, You disappoint me. Uh, Dave actually told me he got his blood results back, and his doctor said that his levels are in normal, healthy ranges. Not a drip. (laughs) I've heard of people using fake piss before, but fake blood? (laughs) NASA hired Kevin so that they could beam signals deeper into outer space than they ever have before by amplifying them off the curvature of his giant forehead. (laughs) If you forgot to lock your car, just point your key fob at him. (laughs) 
Uh, Dave was in the Boy Scouts since he was nine years old. And by the looks of it, they paid him in tins of popcorn to be quiet about all the child molestation. <laughs> I didn't get my dick sucked a lot at camp. <laughs> <sighs> On the weekends, Kevin likes to woodwork and smoke meats at Elton John concerts with his sister. <laughs> Elton John's not the only one with a Rocket Man encore. <laughs> uh, I actually just want to plug some of uh, Dave's dates real quick. Um, on May 3rd, he will be at the Rubber City Comedy Festival. And on April 8th, he, you can catch him blocking out the sun for the total solar eclipse. As a skateboarder, Kevin couldn't cut his wrists when his girlfriend left him for a professional scooter rider because he couldn't bring himself to touch a razor. <laughs> So there it was, uh, Cleveland making their RBL weekly debut, picking up a point in week one uh, for Kevin Eliason versus Dave Heron. Uh, we are going to move slightly northeast now, out of the country, but not that far away. I'm talking about Toronto. Uh, Toronto, after the season they had last year, very uh, tumultuous first half, strong second half. They start this season by picking up two points in week one for the number six ranked battle. This is Sarah Ashby versus Thomas Kalnan. Let's check it out. Sarah works at a grocery store, but she used to teach science to children. And now those children also work at a grocery store. <laughs> That's like CEO in London, Ontario. <laughs> uh, Thomas kind of looks like an undercover cop. Um, who doesn't understand what other undercover means. <laughs> it looks like he'll walk up to a bunch of 12 year olds and be like, hey fellow kids. <laughs> guys know where I can get some hemp? <laughs> I, I do have resting cop face. It, uh, it comes in useful sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Ah, uh, Sarah is super into Pokemon, anime, cosplay, and drag. She runs an amazing Instagram account. Look it up if you ever wonder what Pikachu would look like as a whore. <laughs> and for $10.99 a month. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sex works real work. Um, uh, guys, um... Tom kind of looks like Sid from Toy Story, but all grown up. <laughs> like instead of mixing Barbies and like construction toys together, he's just like compiling all the sex toys together to make his perfect woman. <laughs> like yeah, she doesn't talk, but she's got five flashlights. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> Sarah is a pothead. She is. She is a. I didn't expect that to get a cheer, but right now. she is a drinker. She has been. She has performed naked ten times. She has asked to perform naked four times. She wants. She once drank battery, ac uh, battery acid by accident, and it was the third grossest thing she has ever had in her mouth by accident. By the way, this isn't a roast, Sarah. This is uh, an intervention. We're just all very concerned about the amount of battery acid you've been drinking. Uh, thank you for your concern. <laughs> Uh, guys, got to give it up for Thomas. He recently lost over 70 pounds. Oh my God, can you believe that? Yeah, oh yeah. Go Sid. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> now I'm not gonna make that, that classic, the like, oh, now we can see his penis joke, right? Like, that's not fair and untrue because he could always see his penis. It's just that someone else might want to now. <laughs> That wouldn't really hurt, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah 
studied comedy at Humber College, where she achieved an A in stand-up, an A in sketch, and A-sized cups. <laughs> Thank you. I'm on my period, so they're at least a C. <laughs> <laughs> International Women's Day. Judge. <laughs> uh, Tom gives me big um, if Timon from The Lion King were straight energy. <laughs> like instead of singing Hakuna Matata, he sings Let Me Hank on Those Tatas and gets canceled. What a wonderful phrase. Let me hang on those tatas. I just agreed to do this so I could hit on Sarah, by the way. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah has two cats, but she is not an old cat lady. She's not a young cat lady. I'd call her a middle-aged cat lady if I thought she was going to make it past 40, but... She drinks battery acid, but... The names of Sarah's pussies are Jeffrey and King Clothorn, and Lucy Goosey. It's her third pussy. Okay. No? <laughs> Fuck, that was my favorite one. <laughs> so, uh, there's this common phrase, you know, there they say all good things come in threes, uh, but that's not, that's just not like true with Tom, you know, unless you're counting on like an attractive scale out of 10, then three is pretty high for him. Oh. Um, <laughs> but no, actually like all good things for Tom come in twos, you know, he's got two albums out, he's got two dead parents. <laughs> and later this year, he hopes to experience his first twosome. <laughs> Toronto getting on the board with the number six battle this week, picking up a couple of points. Uh, and now we return stateside for the number five battle. This happened in LA this past week, right here in the belly room. Uh, LA, the defending champions, off to a decent start with the number five battle. Good to get some points on the board week one, but for the defending champs, you'd like to see a little bit stronger debut. Regardless, uh, it was a really competitive week and, uh, you know, a lot of good battles still coming up, but you're going to enjoy this one from the belly room at the comedy store here in LA. This is Effie Meadows taking on Phil Will. Here it is. Uh, it's one round is five joke, black man, uh, other oppressed person who's going first. I can, first. I can Ladies go first. first. Yeah. I don't this. mind it. Yeah. This is Effie. This is Phil. Are we ready? Hey! Let's roll! Oh, uh, I'll make this quick. I know you gotta get back to making lunch for the kids of South Park. Uh, I need about 350. Uh, once again, make it loud for my opponent, Malk Om Nom 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 X. Uh, that's never been said before. That's okay. Phil's so fat, the founding fathers would have counted him as four fifths. <laughs> Yeah, Effie not good at math. Look, Effie spent 10 grand on her face to make her feel more beautiful. But unfortunately for her, feelings aren't facts. My dad spent 10 grand on it. <laughs> uh, give it up for my opponent, Farton Luther King Jr. Uh, Phil. Hey, uh, uh, well, let, me, let me hear your pussy fart then. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you look like Bowser after he gets thrown in the lava. <laughs> Martin Luther King Koopa, fuck. <laughs> yo, F, yo, like, yo, 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 delivery is so robotic. It's almost like you're pretending to be someone you're not. <laughs> um. Effie's dad wasn't surprised when she transitioned to be a woman. He always knew his son was going to grow up to be a little bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's Phil Will short for anyways? Philium William? That's okay. That's okay. I like that one. Thank you. I liked it too. Uh, Yo, maybe you really are a woman. You just won't stop talking, will you? My God. 
Um, Effie was born a white man and then transitioned to be a white woman, proving that white people will gentrify literally anything. <laughs> she Uno reversed her white privilege card. <laughs> Uh, give it up for my opponent, Django Unbuttoned. Uh, give it up for me, because she can't give it up to nobody. <laughs> Phil's so fat, every time he goes up the stairs, he quotes his hero, George Floyd, I can't breathe. Mm. Mm. You know, Effie, just because I'm a dick doesn't mean you have to cut me off for attention. <laughs> um, Effie's, Effie's, Effie's cutting off her dick because she doesn't want to explain her situation. She don't want to explain why her dick stick out further than her titties. But how are you going to explain why your pussy smell like balls? It's funny. Uh... In... You know, when they cut off my dick, they're gonna replace it with a pussy. Are they gonna do the same when they cut your foot off for diabetes? You gonna... Hey, listen, I don't care what you say because your pussy got a dick vein in it. You're gonna go, you're gonna go from 10 toes to camel toes. <laughs> yeah, but still nobody to... will hump you because nobody likes a chick whose dick is bigger than her titties. But anyway. No, but your girlfriend's gonna peg you in the leg afterwards. Where your girlfriend at? Your, your wife left you. <laughs> My wife did leave me. I got three bitches now. Uh, yeah. Where they at, though? Ah, uh, yeah. All right, this is getting real. Uh, what the fuck is going on in here? Main event one, Effie Meadows and Philium William. All right, so there it was. L.A., the defending world champions, uh, starting off this season with the number five battle. And uh, I guess the battle that all the internet is going to be talking about. Why is that? Well, it's black versus trans, and you know those get the most comments usually. It's um yeah I know I know we didn't watch it back here. I'm not uh you know I, I said we weren't going to watch them back here, but we were both in the room for that one, and oh, yeah. um it was an interesting battle. Philium William. Philium <laughs> William, I hated that so much. Um, it was a, uh, it was competitive. I will say this, watching it back, because I judged that battle and I voted for for Phil Will. Um, watching it back, I think I might have shortchanged Effie on that one. I, I think Effie Effie's material watching it, it was back was pretty good. Yeah, watching it, I was like, this was closer than everybody gave Effie credit for. Yeah. I think they just kind of didn't like her in the room. But those jokes were probably a little better than Philium Williams. Yeah, and and I my exact critique when judging was I, I felt like Phil had a couple more uh, well crafted jokes from a writing perspective, and it was it was actually way closer to even than uh, than I realized. Sometimes you watch them back and they just play differently on video, or sometimes. You hear Philium William in the room. I think that turned everybody off. It, did. it didn't matter what she wrote. It did. It did. Because she was building momentum, and then it was like watching a car crash into a wall, and it's like, you, all right. You yeah, gotta. you're like, Dave Chappelle was right. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a fun battle. Phil's one of my favorite, uh, you know, up-and-coming uh, guys. I was also looking at his record. Seven and two. No, I Phil Will is underrated. I think uh, at one point he was a little overrated because he was like I think four and one at one point, mm -hmm. and uh, he had battled nothing but tomato cans. Mm. And now it's he's battling some some monsters. I mean, Effie's pretty good. Effie Eff can write. Yeah, Effie's very very good. Yeah. Um, so this is his first big win. I gotta say. Yeah. yeah. This this was a big one. So uh, and and he's getting back in there next month against JP Puth and Vidal, which will be a Ooh. that's that's gonna be a good test. Yeah. That's another non-binary versus black. Yeah. I'm just I'm lining up the entire uh, L. LGBTQ versus uh, the whole black community. Rainbow versus yeah. no, just versus Phil. That's our black community. Okay, that's yeah. <laughs> we do not have a dearth of uh <laughs> of of people of color. On no, the, no. Uh, I so uh, somebody's comment one week was uh you know dearth means uh not that you know not enough. So we fucked up dearth or I fucked up dearth. Oh, did uh, I just said the f word. Oh, well, it was a hell of a run. We almost got there. Um, that's okay. And for for the record, I don't think you can blame yourself using the F word as a reason to get demonetized when all of the jokes are just like Holocaust this and date rape that. Like, I, I think, I think we got to put some blame on the, the appropriate right. parties Your balls here. smell like pussy. Yeah. Or your yeah. pussy smells like balls. Yeah, your pussy smells 
The pussy has a dick vein. There was a lot. Yeah, a lot going on in that Shout one. Shout out William William. Yeah, yeah. He really went to some dark places for that battle. Like, don't say that about Phil Williams. Let's, uh, let's keep it moving right now. Let's jump into the number four battle this week. Um, this is the defending East Coast champion, New York, uh, making their debut in the 2024 season with a couple of faces we saw last year. Two of the better battlers coming out of the apple. I'm talking about Eric Asker and Lucas Arnold. Uh, this was a really fun battle. It's number four this week. Here it is. Uh, Eric's mom got cancer when he was a kid. <laughs> what if I just stop there? <laughs> Eric's mom uh, got cancer when he was a kid and his first girlfriend cheated on him. Hey, Eric, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Santa's only Jewish elf. Uh... <laughs> Facts. Lucas looks like he whispers, now it's a party, as he pours hot water over his sleepy time tea. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always a fucking party. Uh, Eric's depression uh, started when his mom got cancer in fifth grade. Uh, his mom's depression started when she survived and realized that cancer failed to save her from being Eric's mom. <laughs> Your dad's dead too, all right? So... <laughs> It's called follow through. Look it up. <laughs> Lucas is the type of guy who says, "Don't mind if I do." When he sees a tiny free library on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot coming from the guy who looks the way old salad smells. Mm. So, like, uh, Eric's a little bitch boy, right? Uh, Eric's a little bitch boy. He's tried and failed to quit cigarettes multiple times. Yeah, the only convictions you stay true to are the ones you're getting in court next year. <laughs> cool. Uh, Lucas looks like he says, guys, can we stop goofing around for one minute to the other employees at GameStop? <laughs> <laughs> guys, we have a customer. <laughs> Don't you have a gym class and a Pixar movie to go teach? Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, Eric had very severe acne as a kid, which really sucks because that's the most amount of spots you'll ever have. Ooh. Lucas, if you're here, who's practicing their smile? <laughs> wait, wait, did he did he say something? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it over the sound of his past attempts at the guitar. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's very good. good. Uh, Lucas actually fucks a lot. Yep, he's a bit of a ladies boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he, he had a girlfriend, but he just broke up with her. Yeah, isn't that crazy? He broke up with her last week. It's crazy. It was going really well, but then he overheard her on the phone uh, disrespecting the Dewey Decimal System. So. <laughs> nice. Solid. You know, you never get to hear a Dewey Decimal System joke. Yeah. No, nobody references the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System. We need to bring that back. Uh, I that's those are two of my favorites in New York, Lucas and uh, Eric Asker. Yeah, uh, I like how Eric is growing his beard out now. Mm. Looks like Dave Portnoy. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Barstool. Barstool, sure. Yeah, yeah, versus Lucas Arnold, who looks like a feminist blogger <laughs> who hates Dave Portnoy. <laughs> the, the 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 funny thing to me was like, um, you know, Eric's first three jokes all followed that same formula of like he looks like he says, "No, that's a party. Don't mind if I do." Yeah. Can we stop goofing around for one minute? <laughs> And like honestly, if somebody did those jokes against Eric, I think they all would have worked as well. Correct. Eric also strikes me as a guy who fucks with sleepy time tea or <laughs> who could work at a GameStop. Uh, yeah, it was especially he was writing about himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. But um, it was it, it's just very funny because uh, you know Lucas came in with like um, some of the more typical roast battle energy, like mm -hmm. you know his mom died of cancer, and Eric was just over here like you look like you drink tea. Yeah. You little bitch. But that's like your favorite kind of joke. Though. That's like the essence of somebody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like Lucas was going hard about, you know, dead mom, you don't get spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you <laughs> you're a geek yeah right and then uh yeah er- eric was like silly or i think he was kind of more in your vein of that like that denver style which is not so hard silly but we're gonna have a punchline that's kind of hard in there well see i like the hard shit too i i i just i admire the kind of jokes that eric's doing because i can't write them mm. so it's like it's like you know if, if you're Shaq, obviously you enjoy dunking on people but you got to look at steph and be like man <laughs> i wish i could do that right you know like i write more of like the ryan nesson style to like the layered uh you know um uh double entendres and all that kind of stuff but i'm really bad at looking at somebody and being like oh that person drinks tea like that thought <laughs> would just never come into my mind in a million years <laughs> So when somebody does it really well, I'm like, man, I'm I'm jealous of that, you know? Right, yeah, I, I get that, I guess, yeah. But that was a fun battle, though. It was, it was. New York is always solid, really um, a, a deep talent pool. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I look at that when things like, uh, you know, the mothership come up, where we're, we're taking people from different cities. You get to some of these cities, and you're like, all right, I feel like now we're getting into uncharted territory. Yeah. Like, I don't know if this person will be good or not. New York is like, I still have a list of like the 20 people where yeah. it's like. There's no dearth of talent. There's a depth of talent there. Yeah. Nailed it. Nicely done. Thank you. I appreciate as it. As soon as this ends, I'm looking up dearth because I, I I think that person's Fred wrong. Fred Dearth. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, yeah. Nate Welch goes for the title, uh, you know, tomorrow night. In, oh, yeah. Versus Ryan room. Nesson, your boy. Versus Ryan Nesson. Yeah. Nate Nate is all fired up. He's going to he's gonna end the streak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, oh, very what, doing puns. Yeah, well, no, probably that streak will remain yeah. intact. Uh, oh, you mean Nesson's uh, undefeated streak? Yeah, yeah, whole calendar year, whole calendar year. Yeah, <laughs> the the guys, the guys on a run. Um, I would, I would advise, do not overlook Nate Welch. Yeah, as a man who's battled Nate Welch, yeah, <laughs> Just be careful, <laughs> be careful. Don't ever overlook an opponent. For any reason. You're like, uh, it's like uh, defending Zion Williamson. It's just like, all he does is dunk. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't know he had like a mid-range game. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're 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 on the post trying to block uh, block the dunk, and next thing you know, or the dunk, in this case, the puns, you, you could try to stop it, but, yeah. you know, next thing you know, Zion's flying over your head. I do love that. Face. I'm always trying to make like NBA references here, and I forget like half of our audience is all like Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering. That's fine. I think they could piece together what we're saying. We're gonna keep doing sports stuff, and you guys can use context clues to figure it out. You yeah, know? yeah. Fuck you guys. All right. We just walked in here, and there was a man outside smoking meth. All right. This is L.A. It's hard outside. Speaking of a man outside smoking meth, Nate Welch will be going for the title tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, we're, we're goofing around now. We're having too much fun. Uh, it's time to move on. Uh, roast battle is not fun. It's serious business. Urgh. And uh, the RBL season is serious business. And this battle is insane. This is uh, we are about to see a tour de force, perhaps a new star in the roast battle league. Whoa. One of my favorite subplots coming into the season is it's going to be the first year where we do a rookie of the year. Oh, shoot. Because last year, technically, oh, shoot, look at you, nailing it. <laughs> it's so funny to watch you try to, like... I'm trying, man. Yeah, I, I respect it so much. <laughs> um, last year, uh, you know, we didn't have a rookie of the year because technically in the league, everybody was a rookie, right? So this year, it's like, who's going to come out that we didn't see last year yeah. at all? And who is going to throw their 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 hat in the ring, so to speak? And it's about to happen right here. I did not expect to get... A rookie performance this strong week one. Um, This comes to us from Chicago. It is a battle from their recent tournament. This is Zoe Dodson taking on Fujiko. Here it is. Fujiko, I don't know how to put this, but I don't trust you. You know, you kind of look like a like a person in disguise. Like Michael Jackson is still alive, but he's living as a mail order bride. (laughs) She does kind of look like that. Thank you. That was Adiro Rabin. (laughs) <laughs> I'm grateful that you came from the cemetery today. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you just woke up in the coffin. Zoe looks like a Dracula. If the Dracula who bit her was addicted to fentanyl. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Fujika, I feel like you're making a comment on how white I am, but can I just say, isn't your first name Lisa? Bro, <laughs> you're, fucking, you're appropriating your own culture, bro. Seriously, on a scale of 50 to 150, how many car accidents were you at fault for on your way here today? <laughs> Fujika. Let's go. Racism. Lisa is my uh, Starbucks name, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe, you look like you need more vitamin B from the Son and the Father and the Holy Ghost. You remind me so much of my 12th grade math teacher, bro. I, I fucking hated her guts. <laughs> Fujiko, you don't even look like a real person. You look like you came out of like a bootleg Mortal Kombat game. And like your special move would be like stabbing somebody in the eyeballs with chopsticks and then throwing them on a grill or something, bro. <laughs> you don't even look real. I don't even know what she said, but. Uh... <laughs> same. Yeah, same. I hope it was funny. I hope it was funny. <laughs> So Zoe's dream is to start her own family and be in the reality TV show called Real Housewives of Florida Adams Family. <laughs> so it's gonna be ta da 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 ta da 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 crazy because she looks more like Morticia than Zoe does. Bro, I'm so confused Whoa. standing next to you, Fujigo. I can't tell if you're 14 years old or 46 years old, but I like your vibe, dude. I like your vibe. You look like you would work the hibachi station at Hot Topic. <laughs> I like that about you. Thank you, Monday Adams. You didn't even make it to Wednesday. So I used to work at Grinder. You know what Grinder is? It's a gay Tinder. And I saw Zoe's profile on Grinder when she was still Joey. So it's a great transformation. Give it up for Zoe. Thank you. By the way, did you still keep your micro penis? No. <laughs> 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 on my way here today, I saw a billboard that said, Stop Asian Hate. And honestly, guys, I could not agree more. I think we need to take that hate and transfer it to whatever legally blind homosexual dressed you today for this event. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet of her. <laughs> So Zoe was in pornography recently. <laughs> it's called the uh, Corpse Bride. But she also has an OnlyFans. But it's for fans for only necrophilia. So subscribe, guys. It's the best 69 cents I've ever spent. Okay. Oh. Give it up for them. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a reason it's number, number three, there were incredibly high highs. There were some low lows. It was inconsistent. Um, but my God, the height of that Adams family joke, we, we don't see that kind of reaction at roast battle anywhere in the world that often. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think I, yeah, I, I'm into this new character who's going to battle digits someday and that's <laughs> Fujiko. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, first of all, we're going to talk about Fujiko a lot. So uh, let's let's start with Zoe. I thought Zoe had a couple of uh, a couple of fun ones that got slept on a little bit. The on a scale of fifty to one hundred and fifty, how many car crashes did you cause on the way here? That's that's fun. Um, I like that one. I also thought her closer um, about the legally blind homosexual. Dre I think the jokes were like they were well written, but a lot of them applied equally to Zoe, so they weren't like hitting. So they could have been. 
women jokes too, not just Asian well, based jokes. Yeah, like, but like, okay, you look like you worked at Hibachi Grill at Hot Topic. Like she's saying Hot Topic while kind of dressed like a 2000 skater chick. That's what I was saying. Yeah, even during the battle, I was like, it's weird because Fujiko looks more like Morticia than Monday yeah. Adams she was calling yeah, Zoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a little bit of that on both sides. But I, I thought Zoe, I thought there were some some quality jokes that like, Got slept on a little bit because she just got run over by the freight train that is the Fujiko. The, the tournament in Chicago, I love tournaments, number one, mm-hmm. because they always bring somebody like this out where it's like a, either a rising star or a no name, right? Oh, that's you're going to say because of potluck or tailgating, usually. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. That too. The food's I, sweet. Dude, I will go to Chicago to tailgate the finals. <laughs> I won't even judge. I won't even do anything. I will just go out there. To eat some of those big dumb hot dogs, hot dogs they have, and head oh, those back. are sweet. Shout out the Wiener Circle. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, but F- Fujiko, uh, I have never heard of her. She entered this tournament. She got paired up first round against Matthew Mitchell, who is Ooh. one of the more you know known battlers out of Chicago. Had a really good season last year. Battled down at the mothership. Did all that, and she won. And I didn't see the battle. Um, and I heard, I heard rumblings from Chicago. They're like, you got to okay. see this Fujiko. It's fucking, it's insane. Okay. Right. So I started watching it and immediately I thought, cause we have a couple battlers that I've seen where it's like the, the jokes are, you know, because they're speaking broken English, there's Correct. like something added to it. Right. Um, digits. So, <laughs> so I thought we were going to get that. And then her jokes that hit were like so well written, like. It almost felt like a car careening off the road at various times, but she pulled it together last night. Like that, that Adams family thing. I got, got it out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Because the setup was kind of all over the place. And it's like, she's, I'm like, I'm not sure. Like it felt like a joke that was translated through three different languages. And then it wouldn't totally make sense at the end. But when she nailed the, the song, Oh my God, dude, it, it's, it was so good. Yeah. It's like a kamikaze pilot. Like, all right, you hit your target. I get it. But it's like, there was like barely any damage. And then it was like, and she's like, Oh no, no, no. By the way, there's a nuclear bomb in here too. And there was another explosion. I was like, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Fujiko. I mean, that was awesome. I honestly awesome. And then I kind of like Zoe's style. She has yeah. this like real bro you know what I mean? She's very bro-ish. Yeah. It's almost like yeah. she's been watching McCusker and Gillis like <laughs> do their podcast. She's like, dude, you're like this. <laughs> Bro, Fujiko. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm into this new, like, this Gen Z style that McCusker and Gillis have kind of, uh-huh. like, spread over the youth. Yeah. Because they're all just like, my guy. <laughs> yeah, one, one, of, one of her jokes, the setup was like, dude, you look like my old fucking high school teacher. I hated that bitch. <laughs> I hated her, bro. I hated her so much. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I think she maybe overplayed the angle of, I can't tell if you're real or not. Uh, you don't even look like a real person. I don't totally know what that means. Yeah. Um, but man, Fujiko was just like landing and like the stage presence, the like when Zoe's joke bombed to just be like, oh, thank you. Yes. Was just so perfectly placed. Um, Everything rolled off of her. Yeah. It reminded me of like Todd Berry versus uh, Olivia Grace in uh, mm. I think season two of Jeff Ross presents Roast Battle, where everything that she said was pretty good, but it just rolled right off of Todd. So it didn't yeah. really matter what he said after that. It was always going to be a win. Yeah. You know, so she just has that. Even, yeah, when she said, I don't know what you said. I hope it was funny. I hope it was funny. Holy shit. Dude. And this yeah. is from the woman who's speaking broken English. Right. Like that was right. brilliant. The, 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 yeah, she just has that X factor mm-hmm. that you can't quantify or teach. Like, you just either have it or you don't. And she does that. She yeah. is going to be a problem in Chicago. That's my prediction. I think she is going to be a problem for a lot of established battlers. I think they're going to be like, how do I beat this? And yeah, what did you say about her before the battle started? You're like, it said <laughs> that um, Tokyo doesn't have the best. Oh, yeah, off camera, I was like, well, it only took one battle for Tokyo to not have the best Japanese battlers in the league. <laughs> yeah, Japan, step your game up. Shout out Hal and Yasushi, two of my favorites, but yeah. Fujiko is a different animal. Um, yeah, stop exporting your best product. <laughs> Because Chicago now has your best product. Yeah, meanwhile, Japan's best battlers are from, like, Indiana and London. <laughs> Expats. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, by the way, I love, uh, just to close the thought here, I love that no racism intended, but we're talking about a Japanese battler, and I'm like, she was kind of like a poorly driven car, and you're like, yeah, like a kamikaze pilot? Yeah, like, oh, I, I did that on purpose. I thought, oh, we, you did? I thought I, we were doing that. I, <laughs> no, I oh. didn't. <laughs> I was just, uh, I was being uh, unknowingly ignorant. Yeah, no, I was going for it. Nice. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah. Well, then so was I. Nice. I, I want I want credit as well. Good luck. Um, number two is really exciting to me because 
Josh Means spent the entire offseason saying he was being disrespected. We put out odds to win. We put out MVP odds, everything he felt like. They feel like they have something to prove this year. Yeah. On the RBL Commission Instagram account, which if you're not following me on there, make sure you do. That's where you have all the updates for the league and everything like that. I put everybody's season opening dates. The Bay Area wasn't scheduled to open until March 19th. Josh said, I'm not, we're not doing that. We are going to get on this list week one. He has another show that he hosts. It's not even a roast battle. He's like, we're going to do a roast battle in the middle of my show. What? Now, as the commissioner, it's a little bit like Air Bud. I'm like, well, there's nothing in the rule book that says a dog can't play basketball. I, I mean, all right. It's, but he hosts the show. It's at a roast battle venue. It's true. Um, I know roast battles have stand up before. Where do you draw the line? Is it okay to have 45 minutes of stand up and then three battles? Because cities do that. Is yeah. it, you know? So. He sent it to me, and frankly, I was like, hopefully it's not good, and then I won't have to worry about making this decision. It's good. It's fun. Um, shout out to Josh Mean. Shout out to the Bay Area. They took matters into their own hands. They're like, we don't want to wait until March 19th. We want to get on week one, and they did with the number two battle, picking up six points out of the gate. Damn. Um, for, uh, yeah, a, a battle that is way better than I, I would have expected just based on throwing it at an audience in the middle of a stand-up show. Um, this is a lot of fun. This is a uh, established Bay Area veteran Logan Farr hey. going up against Dakota Fry. Let's check it out. Logan looks like he beats his wife for talking during WrestleMania. <laughs> you look like you ran on Jesus for a bite. <laughs> You're built like a fucking upside down drink. <laughs> Logan was honorably discharged from the Air Force, but his son, the con that made him, we hey. call that dishonorable. Charge. His wife, or I'm sorry, my wife was just I find it ironic that I lost my feet during a train and he lost his whole goddamn family. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a good joke. Logan is a racist Republican against critical race theory. Ironic because he got black legs because he thought they made a fucking run faster. <laughs> <laughs> you dress like you eat pussy. <laughs> Horribly. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I know there's a lot of Jew jokes really heavy on it, but roasting a heavy Jew. <laughs> Logan's an unemployed loser. Uh, yeah. He can't really hold out a job because he always gets derailed when he's watching the training videos. <laughs> Really good. If your people control the weather, why are you always sweating? Well, <laughs> 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 it looks like Wolverine and his fossil that came out when he saw a guy in a turban. <laughs> <laughs> you look like your fucking superpower would be safely invested in a coral <laughs> Paul Bunny was on the sex offenders registry list. <laughs> <laughs> he lumbers ass off to try to <laughs> board. All over the world would be safer if you took your work home with you and chopped your own wood. <laughs> you guys, you were sick of Jew jokes. I got six million more of them. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nah. <laughs> Honestly, I can't roast for as good as the third right did. Protein butter on his balls and makes the dog look it off. Like a Jew, I get my money's worth. There's a thing. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. You guys can't stand the heat. Get out of the oven. That was cool. And you're over here like, I can't say shit. 
I mean, I can't say the word ass. We might yeah. get demonetized. Meanwhile, Logan Farr is burning this entire podcast to the ground. <laughs> Just like those Nazis did. Yep, yep. That was, you're right, that was a lot of fun. The uh, the theme was the Holocaust. Uh, yeah, I think our uh, our trolls are going to love this one. Yeah, big time. I mean, it, props to those guys. They did like eight jokes apiece. That just kept going and going, and it was uh, it was, it was was really, really good. I mean, some of... Uh, that was a real blitzkrieg. Yeah. <laughs> you did it intentionally again. I, I, I caught it that time. <laughs> Uh, some of some of Logan's jokes were obviously like he beat the the theme to death, um, but <laughs> I've heard a lot of variations of like the train train when in Logan battles. Mm-hmm. It's like you know get a train run on a person and then like that. But I haven't heard that angle tying it into the the Holocaust thing. Like I'm sure Logan has been dying to battle a Jewish person. So he can get off that that train train wordplay. I mean, he finally did. Yeah, he finally got a Jewish person who's that was that was man. I don't know. Yeah, this is this this podcast is crazy tonight. It is. <laughs> it's 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 kind of yeah. It's all over the place. I love um I love Dakota's joke about uh, he can't hold down a regular job because he keeps getting derailed during the training videos. Oh, uh, so I mean, That's there's a lot of beautifully written. Exactly. Yeah, that was a fun. That was a. Fu- I, I don't know what to say right now because there was so many Holocaust jokes. Yeah. Thanks, Logan. It was a lot. <laughs> it's also one of those that's like um. You know, it, it's it's interesting because uh, we send these to multiple people. There's a yeah. whole you know contingency of people who like uh, vote on them, and like a f- feedback I got a couple times were like, um, it has to be really high on the list because the crowd was going nuts, the energy was outstanding, but at times I kind of hated it. And I'm like, I get that, I I understand. Yeah, it sounds like it's like, what, is this front of like Proud Boys or Nazis or Oath Keepers? Like, what is this? It was it was it was a lot, right? But. Um, and everybody, it, it comes in at number two this week, even though the highest it ranked on any individual sheet was three. Wow. Everybody had it at three, consistently at three, but Chicago was more up and down. Chicago was number two on a couple and then number six over here. And uh, you know what I mean? Um, so the consistency, everybody seemed to agree that it was a really fun battle. Um, the crowd energy was crazy and, uh, the Bay area coming right. out, coming out week one, man. I mean, that was textbook roast battle, you know, go for a polarizing subject and kind of beat it to death. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and we saw that with the last battle with uh, Fujiko and Zoe, right? Because she was going hard with the uh, the Asian jokes and then Fujiko was going hard with, the, <laughs> you're kind of dead. <laughs> Your last dance for Mary Jane from Tom Petty. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to see if the Bay Area can keep this up. Um, it's one thing to come out on fire at the beginning and be like, we got something to prove. Yeah. Let's let's get into the doldrums of the season, get to week 17 and then see, you know, how many surprise battles they're doing at stand up shows. Yeah, let's see how many Jew jokes you guys have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I heard you say six million. We got 34 weeks. Yeah. Go with it. <laughs> at, at this rate, we'll hit six million by week 20. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, if, if, Lo- if Logan keeps battling. Uh, There's not right. that many Jews in Northern California. So, uh, Bay Area, as of this second, number one in the U.S. West Division. Uh-oh, wow. breaking news. They're number two now because the number one battle this week comes to us from Austin, Texas. Uh, from our most recent show at the Mothership, it's a good week for the U.S. West Division. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but first, let's get into the number one battle this week. This comes to us from the Comedy Mothership. Um, one of the front runners for RBL MVP picking up a number one battle of the week and a win in the first week of the season. I'm talking about Heather Keith going up against uh, one of the winningest battlers from last year, Jack Timmons. It was a great fight. Here it is. One round, five jokes. Lady, gentlemen, who's uh-huh. going first? I'll go first. Yeah, bitch, he's just first. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had an hour to think about this. So. <laughs> yeah, yes, we did. This is Austin, okay? Some of the best right here. This is Jack Timmons. That's Heather Keith. Let's roast! <laughs> Every Christmas, uh, Jack begs for a cock, and everybody says the same thing. Uh, You'll shoot your eye out, kid. (laughs) Uh, Heather, uh, I was talking to Heather before the show, and I I asked her how she got into the mothership, and she told me, uh, she said, I I don't really know, I was grazing out in a field, and (laughs) this beam of light hit me. (laughs) Fucking asshole. Fucking fun-sized Dahmer. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck <Damn>. you. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, 
the only thing true about that is I would never fuck you. Because <laughs> I'm not a man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack does look like every time he sees a little girl, he goes, hey, smash her pass. <laughs> 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 Fucking Lana Del Taco, really? <laughs> <Three hundred pounds. laughs> Fucking Dexter's Vagatory. Hey, fuck you. Hey. You guys like that? Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pip squeak. <laughs> no, stop. Stop it. <laughs> Heather, uh, Heather looks like someone just like put a bunch of glue on her and then made her sprint through a Goodwill. <laughs> Uh, Jack, Jack uh, works part time at Lululemon. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> Fuck, dude. He said his favorite part about the job is that he's short enough to see underneath the changing room curtains. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> no, I check IDs at the door, and I'm not good at it. <laughs> uh, Heather's a Heather's a cat lady, and uh, by that I mean about every five hours she starts screaming at people for food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as wide as you are tall, dude. Fuck you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Damn it, that was my fourth one. <laughs> I, uh, Jack uh, looks like the little kid from Stuart Little. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, if, the, if the kid made the mouse crawl up his ass every night. <laughs> Fuck you. At least I don't look like I'm full of cheese. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Heather, uh, Heather, Heather's, uh, she tried to commit suicide one time. No, I know, it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> no, she actually did. She took all her pills and she rolled it up into a slice of bologna. <laughs> Jack, uh, Jack really is a jack of all trades. Uh, he'll trade you anything just to get a taste of your penis. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they taste like. <laughs> um, Heather, Heather looks like she goes to restaurants and then asks for like the kids' menu and crayons, and then she just eats those with ketchup. <laughs> I prefer honey mustard. <laughs> Keep it going for Jack Simmons! Fun. That was the battle of the week. I didn't yeah. remember how much fun that was. So good, man, man. You called that, and I just don't think I I heard that many pops and, and that many great jokes and how much fun they were having together on stage. I mean, that is the recipe for a great battle is when they're both friends, they're both saying things that are really, that would hurt anybody else's feelings, but because they're friends, it's just rolling right off of them. I mean, some of the slurs you got to hear were fun. They are just like, ah! <laughs> then going, I mean, just, it was, that was a classic. That was fun. Yeah, it was a really good unanimous decision across all ballots uh, that were cast this week. Uh, everybody had Austin at the number one spot, um, so no controversy there, deservingly so. Heather Keith is a monster. That was my favorite Jack Timmons performance that I've seen. Um, not only the offense, but the defense yeah. of just repeatedly, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. Every joke, he was just like, fuck you, fuck, don't say that. Why, fuck you. <laughs> Heather's so good. I oh mean, like, I don't think I've ever yeah. seen her have a bad battle. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate that opening season two, she's in the top spot because I think she's my lead dog to probably get MVP because if we do get to see her if they submit more videos, we'll be mm -hmm. able to see Heather Keith more, and I think uh, our fans will be able to see, like, oh, yeah, Heather Keith probably should have been there last season. The highest praise to me that you can bestow upon somebody in the roast battle world has nothing to do with wins and losses. It is how many classic battles do you have, right? Which is, I, I would rather, you know, that's what made Keith Carey, you know, arguably the GOAT. That's what makes Paige Wesley on, you know, that Mount Rushmore. That's what makes... All of that's what Ryan Nesson in last season. That was the big step forward he took. It's not the fact that he went undefeated because mm -hmm. his record has always been outstanding. Right. It's the fact that you know the first twenty battles of his career, I couldn't remember a single one of them. Like he won, but it, it didn't have any sticking power. Then you see something like him versus Shalaka, and you're like, oh, this guy has elevated to like another level. Oh yeah. It's the people who you come out of the battle like I just watched a classic performance on both sides. You know. Um, and I think that's absolutely Heather delivers so many of those. You know what you're going to get. You don't know if she's going to win or lose, but you know it's going to be entertaining. Absolutely. And with Jack, like you're saying, that was probably 
our best seeing Jack. Best right? one I've seen. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, even that and the fact that she won that was she took somebody's best shot and still took it and still won. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was, I don't know if she underestimated Jack because clearly she didn't. But in some of those, that could have been like a uh, a trap game, so to speak, of just like, ah, it's Jack Timmons, who cares, kind of a thing. I'm not yeah. going to write that tough for him. And But the fact that they're such good friends, and she really rose to the occasion, and obviously he did because that was his best battle we've seen. So oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that was, uh, that is textbook. That is the framework for what we want to see for Battle of the Week every week. His opening joke about how did you get into the mothership, and I was grazing out in the field, and a oh. beam of light hit me. Um for some reason, all the shows we've done at the Mothership, I haven't heard a lot of people incorporate like the alien angle. Yeah, uh, and he 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 pulled it off. So oh yeah, <laughs> and perfectly. And then she was just like, ah, you prick. That was good. Hats off to both of them. Um, you know, week one is a little bit early to start talking. You know, MVP race, but. Heather Keith uh, this week picked up nine points in the fantasy system that only exists in my head. Ooh, uh, she's lead dog, I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Out the gate. Yeah. Uh, let's sh uh, check out the standings real quick. We're going to skip international this week because Toronto was the only uh, the only city that made the list. Um, Montreal had, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to touch on this real quick because Montreal had a, uh, a battle with some really well-written jokes and one of the deadest crowds I feel like I've ever seen uh. on one of these things, which is which is tough. Um, you know, and that was the comment I got from a few people. They were like, man, I like Montreal, but it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't seem like the crowd. So I don't know if they're if they need to mic the crowd or get more people in there. But um, shout out to to Jason Hool and uh, Arthur Sim Jr. who had a, a really well written fight. Um, and uh, I expect to see more of Montreal coming up here. And then Barcelona was the opposite. They had a fantastic audience and some really high highs. But it was like a ten minute long battle um, that just went on and on and on. And the highs were so high, but there were some like lows in there. So if you guys are watching, I would say uh, mic the crowd in Montreal. And edit by about 40% when you're writing your jokes in Barcelona. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to get feedback because people want to know, like, what do you what do you look for? No, I, I, I like it. I'm just saying but we just keep shitting on Barcelona. I'm not shitting on anything. Yeah. I had a lot of fun watching the battle. Okay. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. But it's one of those things where, like, when you're breaking it down, like, this is good advice in general. Like, if you're even if you're submitting a tape or a writer's packet for something. You always put like the hottest shit up top because people's attention spans, and I learned this the hard way submitting writer's packets, you can't have your best shit on page three mm. because some people are zoning out at the end of page one if you're not like crushing it. So those 10 minute things, it's like they got to be fire kind of the whole way through to like hold attention. So just some just some advice. I like that's, that. That's my take. For any cities who are like, what do we have to do to like, you know, um, crack the crack the list? But mainly Barcelona. Uh, I liked Barcelona. Please don't put words in my mouth. I enjoyed the battle. <laughs> Teddy Hall, Hector Ayala. Uh, I'm only kidding. We just said you got to edit by 40 minutes, but yes. you're good. By 40 percent, not 40 minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So Toronto is the only international city to get on the board week one. A lot of them haven't debuted yet. Manchester, Scotland, Tokyo. They're all still coming up. Toronto uh, picks up two points and lead their division. Let's look at the U.S. standings, though, because we actually have something to look at here. Big week for the West. Austin picking up the number one spot. Bay Area in number two. And then L.A. Uh, grabbing three points there. Um, this is going to be a dogfight the entire season. Uh, Austin and LA are, in my opinion, pretty much neck and neck. And then if the Bay Area continues this, it's going to be a hell of a three-way race. Um, and let's also look at the East before we get out of here. Um, there, Chicago and New York putting up solid showings week one. Uh, Cleveland, the first uh, expansion city to get on the board and score a point. Atlanta still to debut this week. Oh, I'm excited, man. I like that Cleveland's on the board already. Shout out Cleveland. They, they're they putting out a lot of videos. Uh, they've, I think they have a depth of talent out there, actually, because they have so many battles. They've been doing it for so long, eight years at this point. So I like that they're on the board in the first week. Uh, deservedly so. Great battle. Um, and obviously, our favorites for Chicago and New York to lead that division. So, so this is fun, man. Yeah, and Atlanta. Can't wait to see what you guys bring us. I still think it's a dearth of talent. We're gonna, I'm gonna look it up. But you're looking up dearth for real. I'll do. I'll do it off air. Right. Uh, that was week one uh, of the RBL 2024 season. Congrats to everybody who made the list. One week down, 33 to go. A uh, lot of fun. Uh, shout out to Heather Keith uh, and Jack Timmons on the number one battle. Shout out to Fujiko for stealing our hearts and uh, establishing her name on the scene. Uh, until next time, I'm Pat Barker. That's Brian Moses. You got anything else? Let's roast. <laughs>